All right, y'all. Looks like we asked for your worst fighting game habits. But guess what? I've got a PhD in uh, helpology. Is that a real thing? That's a real thing. Can we really do it? Can we actually help you out? And can you help us out by hitting that subscribe button? Because you know what they say. Help me help you. All right, let's jump into the video. This is from Hiram Jackson. I'm so used to losing that winning feels wrong. That's kind of weird, I guess, uh, because obviously the end goal of uh, playing any fighting game is to win in the end, right? Uh, but losing is actually not too bad. I would say I like to lose uh, because it just teaches me that I can become a better player. There's still holes in my games. Uh, there's still things I can learn and become. Just overall, just a, a better player. Oh my God, you a victim. That's not a bad way of thinking because you want to kind of feel that way, right? Because winning should be feeling like, oh, wow, like it's happening, right? Uh, when you're so used to you, uh, losing a lot and then you play against somebody else you never played before and you, you know, you get some games. You're like, oh, wow. You know, I'm like winning all of a sudden, like all of that hard work pays off. If you are in this mentality where losing and winning or whatever are, are your objectives, you need to center yourself and find that middle ground, which is learning and having fun, enjoying and figuring out what you like about fighting games. I don't know how to block. I don't know what it is. I think it was from a Street Fighter player and he played Viper. And I will never forget that he said that you cannot make me block. There's no player in North America that can make me block. I'm gonna keep it a buck, honest man. Yo, you have to block in this game. You have to block your fighting games. Like this, I don't wanna block stuff. Like it's funny, but I hope you guys actually have block. Please. It's really hard to block. It's not easy to block, even though it's very simple. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, ultimately it's like most people just want to press buttons. So if you're pressing buttons while blocking, obviously you're not going to block. You're trying to interrupt. Nobody knows how to block. We don't even like blocking. The people that don't know how to block, they don't even like doing it. That's why you see people begging, pleading for developers for more defensive mechanics because they want to do everything but blocking. How many times could you have gotten out of a situation just by blocking instead of pressing a button? Probably a lot, right? But you have to block. This is from Vilos. I'm doing the most random burst heat activate just to solve sometimes, even if I lose for it. Sometimes there are people that just wants to do cool things, right? And it's okay because, you know, a lot of people like, a lot of people like to do cool stuff. And even if they lose, you know, they just want to know that they can perform, do cool things. All right. I mean, that's cool. You want to be random with it. That's cool. Some people random BP, some people random press buttons on wake up and things like that. You ask them why they do things. Oh, I'm just being random. That's cool. That's all right. Now, if you're trying to improve and you're actually trying to level up your game, you really have to be very crucial with the decisions that you make. And you have to really, you have to actually like look back at it and be like, dang, I really made like a bad decision. If you're just like, yo, I'm playing a game casually, I just want to do like some fun sh blah, 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 then scratch everything I just told you right now. And enjoy it. Live it up, king. Do you king or queen. It doesn't matter how you want to live. If you like living hanging off a cliff with one hand, yo, I support you. I see the overhead coming, but my mind refuses to let go. Uh, I can't even finish because I've been hit and damn near everybody's been hit by so many slow overheads. So usually the thing is that I always say, like helping people like react to overheads is like, you know, when you know a character's block stream, that you should know where uh, after they do a certain move, what's coming next, depending on the range. And like, yeah, you just respond to it accordingly. But that takes practice. Like you'll be in a situation where you're already blocking. You're already, you're blocking and you're ducking. And you're like, all right, all I gotta do is stand up and block. That's all, I see this from a mile away. This is another thing I feel like the FGC overall gets hit by, even people who are top players. So ultimately, I would say just kind of like you want to be aware that if this person does use overhead, you know this person uses overhead. Just keep it in the back of your mind so your reactions are more heightened. I take back once every two games on the average and get no rematch matches. Well, I mean, if you want to live like that, bro, go ahead, man. You know, like, you know, some people... People, people like tea bags, bro. And like, you know, I guess you wake up in the morning. I, I guess you're a tea person by what you just said to me. Oh man, oh man. Is Punk on this one? I hope he is. <laughs> Obviously no one's gonna hit rematch. They're gonna do one and done and then GG's and peace out, send you angry messages. So you know what you need to do. See, the thing about fighting games is people don't have to play with you. So if you're gonna be a jerk, you know, you live by the sword, die by the sword. You, you go try to be a villain out here, that's cool. This is from Royal Nickel. Bodying noobs is useful and fun. Good way to get in practice and lab tech or harder combos in an actual match so you can more consistently use it against better players. I don't even think this is a gaming habit. This is actually um, your strategy on how to become a better player. Cap, 
cap. It is no, it's not. It's not a good idea. Why would you do that? Playing players on your level or above is the best way to practice those. You want to practice those combos? Go to the lab. But overall, I mean, this is a strategy. It's not a habit at all. Honestly, you don't want to always do that, uh, and you don't always want to like have that mentality because something that might work against like uh, like a beginner level may not work at like the best level. I don't ever play them. I just talk about them online to the point where when I say something on Discord, everyone in the server is like, oh, this asshole. His name is a cool dude. That is not cool play right there, bro. You got to be playing these games. How you going? If that's how you want to live, bro, go ahead, dude. I'm not going to even. Both me and I think maybe just kind of playing with the players, you know, and kind of like teaching it on the fly or like showing the knowledge that you do know in actual matches might just, you know, the server might not say, oh, this asshole. Maybe like, oh, man, thanks a lot, who cool dude. Yeah, these are just some people that just like this in the world, you know, and if this is what you want to do, and so be it, you know, just stay in your lane and just leave everybody else alone. I throw out super even when I make it very obvious. Believe it or not, the funniest thing is like obvious supers are actually pretty good to do uh, at a certain part of the game. It, uh, if you don't have a reasoning behind your uh, super, uh, then in that case, then yeah, it, it becomes very bad. Then don't do it like that. How about you uh, don't make it obvious? Uh, you get pressured, right? You get pressured to kind of like do something like you think you have to do something you have to like kind of like make a scramble happen so my personal tip um i just block it out literally i just hold down back i want to figure out like how does the other opponent character works um like what are they, what can what do they do what's their mix up what's where where are their holes and gaps i just take note of all that i play characters purely based on their drip level will the tier list accept me come to us cool person come to us come to the panda side we might have a jersey for you. Panda, cool person, you're the next one on the list. You know, I think this is cool. This is, this is a great habit, actually. Play what you like. You don't need to play the meta. You don't need to play top tier. You don't need to be a low tier hero. You just want to, I, I always want to tell people, just play what character that you feel resonates with you the most. You should play what character that you feel like looks cool for you. This is a great habit, cool person. And I wish I was as cool as you. Jumping when they keep anti-airing me, Worst rage was in Street Fighter 4 AE. I threw the controller at my foot and got a bruise with a broken controller. If you throw the controller down on your foot, you got a bruise, but you broke the controller, your foot is probably made out of lead. So we didn't get that foot checked out, brother, because uh, you break your controllers on there, you, that left foot uh, might be a robot, you might be an android. I feel like a lot of people, when you stop them from doing something that they try to do to you, they try to do it harder. And I don't know why. I'm just like, bro, like, you can't do this. You actually have to block. That's what anti are for, to tell you to stop jumping. Why are you jumping? The fact that you know that, you know, you you jump a lot is uh, the first step of understanding your bad habit. Try not to jump. And it's hard. It's harder to say than done uh, because at any time, I think most people practice combos. They always start with a jumping combo. My bad habit is picking up a game, waiting to wanted to get really into it, but then I tell my effort for a week, then picking up three more games. Ah, uh, it's not a bad, bad thing. I mean, I think it's really good to ma like master fundamentals because if you master fundamentals, then you'd be able to play any game you want, anytime, anywhere, any day. I think this is just more of just like you um, as a gamer, right? You just love video games. Like having multiple games, is it's so hard to juggle. I can't, I can barely juggle Street Fighter V and, and Guilty Gear, you know? Even adding any more games, my brain is just, it just, I see that leaking out of my ears. Obviously, when you find a game, stick to it. Uh, try to find some motivation, especially when it comes to fighting games, because the more time you put into it, the better you become. If I get knocked down or being comboed, I always hold down the heaviest attack button and move my directional inputs in a circular clockwise motion. My original thinking was if I don't know which way I'm teching, then neither do you. This is pointless in some fighting games though, because teching is done differently or doesn't exist in some situations. I still find myself doing it. The more you want to kind of like keep a library of like this tool set goes for this game, this tool set goes for this game, and so forth and so forth. You should call up like like a like a school teacher or something like that, like your old school teacher, you know, call them up. And every time that you do that motion, have them just slap your hand. Just spow. Obviously, if you play Street Fighter Five, you know it's not gonna really work like that, right? It's, you might get some bad inputs. You might get 
like a random counter hit and it's not going to be in your favor. So as long as you just kind of separate these scenarios of like different game mechanics, you'll be fine. I don't think that's a good habit at all. I think that is a very, very, very bad habit. It's not going to make you react to the situation that you're in. Like you're not learning how to get out of things. You're just praying that you get out. I play on Wi-Fi and when I was lagging, I would message the other guy telling him to get cable. Oh, I mean, that's just toxic. Wow, that's actually f***ed up. You don't get no advice from me. You just get scorned. You just get scorned. You are not a good person. You are not a good person. If I was if I was Santa, I would give you coal. Forget that. Now I give you nothing. You ain't get nothing on that tree. You ain't get a dang present, bro. I always, I, I don't really support Wi-Fi. Obviously, I would never be like, yo, play on Wi-Fi or anything like that. I always want you to, to use an Ethernet cable. But, you know, sometimes life could be different where the... You know the router is in the other room so they, you know you can't put the wire from the floor to, to your to your room where you know where your playstation is or anything like that the wi-fi players that are not part of the wi-fi community like this individual right here basically was like yo i got a i'm on wi-fi i got this router next to my uh my playstation or my my computer but you know what i don't like cords there's something about cords that just Makes me angry. I'll always try to block unblockables. Yeah, well, that is a very terrible habit. What? My, my suggestion would be to not try to block the unblockables. Evasion, right? Evading these like attacks, these scenarios where you're put in these situations where unblockables happens, that's the most important part. So I would say so work on your evasion game. I used to have a bad habit in games like Tekken where if I really didn't like the opponent, I would rage quit the victory screen. This way they still got they still got the points, but I would waste their time with the dis disconnect screen. That's like mild villainry. Why, why would you go that far? That's mad petty. Why would you even do that? If you're gonna do it, I guess. I'm not saying rage quit. Hold up, no, don't take my words out of context. I'm just saying that if you were going to do this and you're already in this 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 lifestyle keep it with the petty theft i like that that's just so non-productive that's kind of mean i don't even know what to say with that i once fought an eighth floor who decided to fight on the 10th floor when i was playing chip then i used his command graph seven times in a row and every one of them connected i felt pretty bad afterwards well why why is the guy in 10th floor when he's supposed to be in eighth floor so you know, he just had to learn the hard way, bro. He wanted to get a taste of what, what, what the tenth floor looked like. You know. Listen, Jones, you're too nice of a person. The uh, fighting game world, you won't survive if you act like this. If you think like this, you might have inspired that person to go into the lab and be like, "What is this move that he turns invisible and leaves fly around, and I can't block it?" And he might, "Oh, that's a command grab." So you might have taught him that matchup, right? Or you might have, might have gotten him to just delete the game, sell it back, or just not play the game ever again. If they keep taking the command grab, why should you change up your game plan? You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nothing you gotta do. You're doing everything right. You're doing everything correct. Why are you feeling bad? We about those W's, you know what I'm saying? We about those W's. We obviously about learning, but you can learn that if people don't pick up on tendencies or habits, that's their own fault. Don't change up your game plan. I taught at the end of every match one to flex on them haters, GGST. Oh, so you're just clearly a toxic person, just like taunting at the end of every match. How you know the haters though? Bobster Lobster? Bro, like what if I run into you in uh in ranked and you you flexing on me, calling me a hater, bro, I don't even know who you are. You know, whatever makes your habit good. I don't think it's a really great habit because you might you might taunt on somebody that actually don't hate you, you know? They probably just don't like your character. If you taunt on people who are teabagging you, who are talking mess about you that is when that's a flex if i get absolutely destroyed the first round in any game i don't even leave the game i just let it go i just let go of the controller while my opponent either finished me off or just troll the rest of the game one time though someone sent me a hate mail telling me to quit the game if i'm just going to give up sometimes i feel like he's right you have to understand the rule set the rule set says you need to fight until you either lose all rounds or you win all rounds so the fact that you're automatically giving up in the first game is actually disrespectful to the player so if you're not trying to be disrespectful, you should just play it out. Even if you may feel that you're going to lose, you just, just need to fight it out. There's no reason to quit. Just do your best. If you're getting absolutely destroyed, you're probably losing motivation, right? Because you know, you just don't want to play anymore. Um, so I feel like in that situation, take, take, take something from my book, never give up. 
right? Uh, like I said, losing is okay. If you know why you're absolutely getting destroyed, the most important part is knowing why. If you can prevent from getting, like let's say for example, you know what you're doing wrong. So you go from absolutely getting destroyed to just getting destroyed, right? And then, and then it go, and that can go into just losing and that could go to like, oh, it's going back and forth. You see like, you want progress, right? Once you see and you notice progress, then you're not gonna leave, you let go of the controller. You're gonna try to fight and get better and become a better fighting game player, right? That's the most important part is becoming a better fighting game player. All right, y'all, I'm pretty sure that y'all have a lot more bad habits. There's a lot I did not see in that list. So get on it. Go in the comment section below, drop some more bad habits, maybe we'll make another video and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.